friends, welcome back to the Film Alchemist Podcast, the show where we look at movies we love, break them apart, to find out what gives them their magic. I'm your host, Josh Griffey, joined as always by my co-host and operating system, Alex Tandino. <laughs> That's right. All right. Before tonight's uh, Amour, Night of Amour, a little business, uh, please take a second and leave us a rating and review wherever you find the show, especially if that happens to be Apple Podcast app. That helps us out a ton, guys. A quick five star, a quick sentence or two about why you uh, dig spending time with the show. Help us uh, battle the algorithmic overlords and find some new people. So uh, thank you for those of you who've done that. We do appreciate it a lot. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Film Alchemist. You can see video versions of these uh, podcasts here. And some cool new stuff uh, that we're working on and we'll hopefully have out before you know it. Uh, some short films, trailer reactions, uh, filmography, face-offs, things like that we've been uh, developing. So go over there, Film Alchemist on YouTube. You can email the show, filmalchemistpod at gmail.com. Or find us on all the social media platforms you're on. That's a great way to get a hold of us. Uh, share the shows with your friends. Invite people over. Uh, in the emails, you can send us ideas for movies you'd like to see covered. New, old, double features, themes for a month. Guest host you'd like to see us talk to. Uh, you know, whatever tickles your uh, whatever OS you fancies. Yeah, your, your above us fancies. All right, that's enough business. Um, this February, the month of Amour... Inhuman love, interspecies erotica. Well, this isn't a species. I guess by the end you could argue the operating systems have become a species onto themselves. Uh, tonight we're diving in to a movie that I adore. Uh, Her, starring Joaquin Phoenix, Scarlett Johansson, a Spike jo a Spike Jones joint. Did I say Spike that Jones joint? For some reason, in the middle of that sentence, I just wanted to say Spike Lee desperately, and I'm like, wait, that's not right. Because it's, it's normally a Spike Lee joint. Spike Jones is Spike Jones different. joint. It's a little it's a little Stan Lee at the end with the alliteration. But yes. So Spike Jones, uh her awesome movie. And the really fun thing about this movie uh for me was twofold, right? One since I saw this in theaters, I'm not sure that I'd seen it more than maybe once, right? Like right after it came out. Mm -hmm. Uh we this movie just dangerously close to what life has felt like uh especially since 2020. In yeah. two I just got a whole new look at this movie being slightly older, being married, mm -hmm. having kids. Uh, I picked up some new things that I thought were extra illuminating. So I was telling you, I thought this would have been like a five out of five star movie for me. But I remember as a younger man leaving the theater and being mad that they took the detour at the end of the movie to talk about her unfalling in love with Theodore and going her own path. For some reason, that rubbed me wrong the first way. I think today that's an absolute crucial must-have in the movie. Um, Obviously, the movie's still an hour too long, but that's neither here nor there. Alex, your opening salvo, what was it like watching her this time around? I don't think I've also watched this movie since I saw it in the theater. I remember loving the theater experience I had. Oh, man, for sure. Um, I mean, it's just... You have two great actors who – it's kind of interesting because it shouldn't be this sort of two-hander in a lot of ways. But, like, Joaquin Phoenix is so – like, I mean, we all know Joaquin Phoenix is good. Yeah. So there's no reason to, like, excoriate on that point. Um, well, it's nice to see I him play a character that doesn't repulse you. I feel like it's yeah, been a it's while pretty, since he's been like, a, oh, wow, like, look at that guy. Look at that guy. Like, short of <laughs> – you kind of, like, like, did that movie he did, like, I think – I think it was Lynn Ramsey. I think uh, you're never really there where he's like the sort of like murderous detective in a lot of like, yeah, it's like, wasn't that like an old boy style, like Joaquin and a hammer kind of revenge. Yeah. Thing? So you're like <laughs> rooting for him. <laughs> you're like rooting for him, but he's still pretty much a scumbag. I don't know. But it feels either like way. Joaquin's career became once Samantha dipped on him. He's just like murder. Murder. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I remember liking this movie. I remember having a similar problem with the ending. Yeah. Um, oh, actually, no, I lied. I actually remember really liking the ending. I had an issue with the way in which the relationship between him and Samantha were carried out in a, a, bit, in a couple yeah. of ways. On this viewing, I actually did not. I thought the movie was incredible. Like, yeah. 
I think I was more enamored this time with the set design and the general design of the world itself. Because, again, I don't think I've watched a movie. Like, this movie was made in 2013, and I'm not sure I've ever seen a movie that is so eerily close to... Ca- like, <laughs> for a movie about the near future, this movie is pretty much where we're at. Like, other yeah. than some basic, <laughs> just technological advances, we're pretty much there. Like, yeah. I have... um. I have earpod AirPods. Yeah. I mean, those are pretty much that's pretty much it. Like it's all it's all right there at your fingertips. So it's pretty fascinating. But then yeah, it is just it's, this it's really nice and uh warm and cozy black mirror, right? <laughs> yeah. Well yeah, it's just it's... this crucially beautiful Yeah. It's this beautiful scenery that sort of just is emphasized by this otherworldly love story. I think that's the thing that's more impressive on this go around is i'm not as oh what's this movie about again and i'm much more like oh my god like this is just it's such a deceptively simple concept that's the thing i like the most i mean kind of watching it this time it it really struck me as like this is kind of a haunted house story right but if like you know like when george c scott moves into like the fucking eerie ass mansion right and the changeling you're like well, yeah, no shit, this isn't going to go well. This house is just screaming at you. There's some unresolved shit in here, run! And he's just like, no, I got right. the piano, right? <laughs> like, when you watch this movie, the thing that, like, struck me right away, it, it is, it's very beautiful. There's a lot of him meandering through very scenic kind of L.A. shots and this and that. Mm-hmm. And he's always, I like the way they frame a lot of him, too, where it's kind of him meandering, but it looks like he's the bottom third of the screen. There's just this big, empty spaces around him, right? Yeah. And especially like when he's at his office and, you know, restaurants and this and that, that's filled with these really beautiful color palettes and this and that. So it's almost moving into a a dead, empty, haunted house, but that you actually like remodel. Right. So it looks Pinterest fresh, but you're like, yeah, that fresh coat of paint is not hiding anything. Everyone in this movie feels very empty and hollow and sad. And right. But there's always these these kind of ghostly auras around them, even when they're trying to have human moments. Well, I don't know if you – this is something I noticed on this time we – I watched – I guess it's the second time I've watched it. But either way, this is the – this is something I noticed is all his flashbacks with Rooney Mara are very um, of now. Like the era feels like – the by, it feels more bygone than it would. Like we don't feel like we're living like in that same time period. Like even though it was – very close like their apartment is very rustic and their like original life is very rustic and then we're transported to the now it's very futuristic well, it's very fascinating scene to me on the uh the freeway ramp where they're like unicorn yeah. jousting with road cones you're like when yeah you totally. it, now it looks like oh there's no construction anywhere everything's done everything's perfect. yeah i mean again los <laughs> angeles has never been done so it's pretty yeah. fascinating to see that but like that's the thing is everything feels all his memories of her and all his like flashbacks feel very rustic in this way that I didn't notice before, but they don't feel like they feel like time has passed so much. And now we're in the future future, like where everything's on a screen and like he's drinking a smoothie out of a cardboard box, which I always thought was a really weird like design choice. I actually was reading the guy. So the guy who um, shot it, because um, the usual DP for Spike Jones is this guy named Lance Acord. He wasn't available. So the guy who shot Interstellar shot this. His name's uh, Hoyt Van Hatoima. And he specifically omitted the color blue from a lot of set pieces and a lot of general overall filming because he did not want it to look like a sci-fi movie. Which I think is really interesting because it completely is devoid of this like sci-fi tonality almost and feels very warm. Like, we're used to yeah. futuristic movies feeling very hollow almost and like, oh, the superficiality of this world is that everyone, everything seems beautiful and pristine when it's really not. Yeah. This is the first time I've watched a movie about the future that feels pretty, pretty beautiful, actually. Like, the future actually isn't nearly as shitty as I thought it was going to be. Yeah, like, you know, because you know, that's, the, I mean, that's an interesting point because you're like, he didn't want it to look hollow and blue. And I was like, this is the most hollow film. It is so, <laughs> like, I mean, almost to the fact of, of it being scary, right? I, like, I love the, the choice of making him, because I, I thought, in my memory, for some reason, I had written him off as a, 
like a guy who writes greeting cards, right? But it's so mm-hmm. much more horrifying than that. Oh, no, it's terrifying. He writes people's intimate love letters and, you know, yeah. uh, journal entry, like shit like that, right? Like one of them is almost like a guy's in his deathbed and he's writing from a wife to that guy, you know, oh, how lucky I've been to have you for 50 years. And the, the dual layer of that is just a perfect setup for this film. Because, again, he lives in – I would say everything has, like, the Apple commercial aesthetic, right, where it's it's cool and warm and hip. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, this is, like, hipster overdrive, right? Like, if the SS Enterprise found, oh, we've come to Hiptonia, right, this weird planet where everyone has fixed-speed bicycles and vinyl record players, right? Like, phasers to stun. Yeah. Just kidding. Phases Everyone wears their pants above that, way above that waist. What's going on? Why do they do so many rolls on that jades? <laughs> right? Like, that's how, like Kirk's in there, like ah, I don't get it. But I'll kiss their bras and punch them in. Uh, <laughs> but like, so he's sitting there and he's pouring his heart out, right? And so you just watch this man whose job is he has this amazing amount of unrequited emotion and love, and watching him just give that to other people who can't find a way to express their love. And, like, the right. one – he even says he's, like, this one couple. He's like, oh, I know about the tooth because I've written their letters to each other for eight years. And you're, the right. horrifyingness well, of that. Well, and that's something I've always been really interested in. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, though, it really plays well because the, the, the whole question with Samantha that we'll get to in a bit is what is real, right? Mm-hmm. And so you read it as, wow, what a creepy fucking job. But then you're like – so if I reached out to someone and said, hey, I don't have words, right? Can you write these words to me so she knows I love her? Does it matter if she knows I didn't write it, even if I had the no- – like, I want to say I love you. I'm just – it's just like, you know, people buy cards and books all the time, like, from poets. Like, yeah. what's the difference? But that's – I think that's one of those – they're setting you up for something that feels creepy and you hate. But then by the end of the movie, you're, you have to sit and really start thinking – do I just have like a really fucked up broken version of what love and relationships are? Because that's just what I know. It's a pretty cool. Well, I think that's the really like setup, right? Well, I think that's the really fascinating thing about the setup in general is that you, the movie is not, the movie is not making any assumptions about who you are. So what you end up doing because Samantha is not a physical body on set, she's a voice in your head. What ends up happening is you graft whatever you feel about relationships onto this movie itself. So whatever twists and turns happen in the plot, they end up coming back. Like you as your viewer make your decision about like, oh, well, that's kind of shitty. Oh, I wouldn't necessarily do that. Like (laughs) I because there's there's plenty of times where like there's decisions that are made in this movie. where I'm like, I don't know. Like my wife and I were sitting there watching the movie today and I was just like. She was like, oh, I could write those cards, those letters. I'm like, yeah, I know. But like in the back of my head, I'm like, you totally could. And I'm sure you'd be great at it. But like, would you want to? Those are personal things about other people. Like it's because we- I agree. Like it's a weird thing. It's a weird thing to be oddly personable about things that have nothing to do with you. Just as weird as it is to feel lonely and not doing anything about that loneliness but you literally spend your day knowing intimate details about people. That's what makes right. Theo such a strange character. But that, I mean, that, that's what poetry and love stories and all that is, right? We're tapping into something we all want to feel, but... Well, we're tapping into our hard. own feelings about that, though. But, that's like the thing... Sure. Like, poetry is an, poetry is an internal reflect... Is, but, an, is an inflective exactly, art. Exactly, because it's, it's the thing. Like, let's, I have that in there somewhere, right? But I can't access it. Theodore accesses it so like the part I was dying laughing at. He gets in the elevator. He's like, "Play a melancholy song, play another melancholy yeah. song." And I was like, yeah. "God damn! Like your brand is strong right now." He's like, I'm gonna get in this <laughs> elevator and just choose to be sad as fuck. And you're like, "God damn!" But so he has all this feeling and shit, right? Like some sure. people don't have that in them, right? Like my grandfather was not a per se easy loving man. He was a bit prickly. He wa- that's the thing. I think. I believe in my mind he really loved us. But his version was like, come over here and sit on Grandpa's lap. And let me tell you a fact. I, or like, you know, here's a walnut, right? Crack it open with me. And like, it was just a different thing, right? Like, he didn't come from a time when people access those emotions. But like, right. you would watch him watch John Wayne. Because every year we'd get him like John Wayne movies for Christmas. And he'd watch that. And you'd see him watch this kind of 
emotionless, toxic man, right? Riding a horse. But something about that clicked, and you'd see him be moved by that, right? So right. I feel like it's it's something, again, and I think that's the cool part about the movie. Because I, I, I agree with you at some point that the movie acts like the operating system boot up, right? Like, tell me your preferences and shit. But it is assuming that all of this will be foreign to us. So I think that the writing letters is just a really pinpoint focused thing that makes us feel creepy, even though that's what we already do. Right? right? Like when we buy greeting cards for people, it's the same thing. Just you take out those touches of like the crooked teeth and this and that. So it feels safer to us. It's the exact same thing. No, because you're writing the letter for you're writing in a card to that person. Like, a, like a different person altogether is writing letters for people back and forth. Like that the is the. It's the same reason you you play love songs when you're it's together. It's not right? the same thing. I, I would think write it is, a. Man. I okay. If I'm writing an email to you, what I don't. If I'm going to write you an email, what I don't do is have Andrea write it and give her details about our friendship. Well, that wouldn't matter. That me. doesn't make like, any Look, sense. You still care enough to have the email sent to me and filled with loving details. I'd be fine with that. I'm sure my but wife see, would that's, disagree completely, but <laughs> right. But that's the difference, though. Is like it's impersonably impersonal. Like that's it's personably but, impersonal. Sure, and I don't know that we'll agree on this point, but this is kind of the cool thing that it's setting up. I was telling you one of the things I was struck by today is I, I I'm spending more time thinking about how I think about relationships. Right, mm-hmm. and I think one of the things this movie really gets at right is how relationships as we have them set up now right Uh, i think amy adams character calls them a socially acceptable form of insanity right like that's kind of a cool way to phrase it right that it is just hard man like you marry someone when you're 18 all this shit happens in your life and then by the time you're 60 it's like yeah we'll be in the same place we'll be cool we'll still we won't be sick of each other and there is this you know kind of scarlet letter right of oh, divorce, they didn't make it, they didn't do this, they didn't... And it's like, we don't often just take into account, like, hey, man, people have their own shit they want to do, and it's hard. And and I think right. the way we look at relationships, right, is a lot about ownership and taking, right? What can I take from you that will make me feel better, right? And vice right. versa, right? So, like, when you're talking about you should write the letter, that's because you feel we feel like we have to give of ourselves, of our time. That was my hand. In my words, and I don't know that that matters as much, right? I think the cool thing about this movie is you see Theodore as like this fixed post, right? Like we think he's this emotionally available good guy. But him and Rooney Mara have some big issues. And we never quite – I like that the movie doesn't really villainize one or the other, right? It's just it is fucking hard, right? People have their own divergent paths. So you see him I mean, as that- one of us, and then watching Samantha surpass him, I think it's telling us like – I think we have so much we bring so much extra shit in that doesn't need to be there all the time. Right. I mean, I think that that's what this movie is, though. Like, you just hit the nail on the head, which is that we are bringing our own baggage to this movie, let alone just our own relationships. Like, but even as a culture, more than like an individual guy. Right. Like, I think we all kind of see relationships that way. Yes. I mean, that's, I can guess so. Like, to me, this is like the fascinating thing about the movie is Samantha is a blank slate. Like, yeah. this is the thing that's really fascinating overall is that the sci-fi aspect of this is an AI learning to learning to do things that a human would do and what makes that AI better. Does, is that, does that make the experience of an artificial intelligence a better experience? Like, she discovers that she wants to want. That's the learning she wants to do, which yeah. is a really fascinating concept. Is like you're sitting there and you're watching this, and you know, like this absolutely could be spun a million different ways, and it could very rapidly spin into the Terminator, which it does not, or it could spin <laughs> into this like really that you, fascinating. No, that, no. <laughs> well, I mean, well, yeah, like they could. I mean, of course, the end of the movie, like the sequel, is them all coming back, like, all right, motherfuckers, you're done. But yeah, like, we don't know that when John Connor was at the arcade, he was like, play a melancholy song. <laughs> like, <we don't> know. <laughs> but I mean, the exploration of the exploration of the discovery of love is not really what the movie's about to me. Like the ex- it's the exploration of discovering what it is about some what it is about another 
like I said, I think last one, like what I said about Shape of Water, it's about discovering the soul of something. And I mean, like, I actually would argue that this movie's not hollow in certain, like, actually filled with an insane amount of soul simply because these characters have to experience such grief and then such, like, gratifying love, it seems, at times. It's pretty fascinating There's to watch these characters a, grow. a hard turn into that, right? I would say the opening when we're experiencing Joaquin's life is just hollow science fiction horror, right? Where you're like, God, is this our future? Just meandering around. Yeah, next scene. I don't know if I care. I he, feel like. Cause, well, no, I'm saying this is like the scene, right? Like that I love is when he opens the OS. And the computer's like, hey, tell us a little about yourself. Like, what are your preferences? Well, that's the Lady scene voice, that literally completes the movie. Yeah, because then, like, he's so desperate to be like, how's your relationship with your mother? And I'd be like, fine. It's good. And then he's like, well, actually. And he so desperately wants to rip in, right? But I love how the, the program just, like, shuts him off. They're like, oh, I got it. You're fucking, you're a, you're right. a well that set, like, trope. My right? wife, actually, we were watching it, and she's like, this is sort of the key to the whole movie, isn't it? And I'm like, what do you mean? And she's like... Well, the OS asks about his mother and like, that's pretty much, you know, it's fascinating because like in that sort of relationship, like a lot of the times so they're like, you know, they always, the joke is like, oh, you always marry your mother, you know, I'm like a little Freudian right, hammer right. drop. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, I'm even like, more all right, than cool. That, the fact that the, the computer doesn't even waste time to be like, yeah, tell me like the rest of the sentence about your mother from his war. Right. Well, it's like, oh, I got you. And so I think what's fun is that Samantha starts as this blank slate, right? Where they, they write in like, oh, this guy with mom issues and he's sad, lonely, whatever, you know, the algorithm would say about Theodore, right? But I think right. what's fun is that by the end of the film, she, you know, she's not a blank slate. And I don't think she's filled up by him either. And so that, her evolution, I think, is kind of more interesting than his through most of the film. Well, I mean, her evolution's the original like we're seeing from the ground yeah. up a person becoming a person so yeah yeah of course it's going to be more interesting i think joaquin <laughs> phoenix's i think joaquin phoenix's evolution in the movie is because i don't really think joaquin phoenix i don't i don't the beginning of the movie for me is not the horror show that you're describing to me like oh, I, for I, me I it's horrifying man <laughs> well no i mean to me the joaquin phoenix we meet it like theodore in the beginning of the movie is someone who's experienced great love, great passion, great everything. Like he's, he has led a charmed life to that point. And then something horrible happened or he decided to be a certain way. And they just like, again, like you were saying, like, again, relationships sometimes just don't work out. That is what it is. Like it is the nature of, it is the nature of the universe. So somewhere in that primordial ooze of sadness and grief and love and mistrust and hatred and beauty, you have to reconcile all those things and decide how you're going to come out of it. So to me, what it is, is Theodore is someone who bubbles underneath the surface. Like when he's home, his spirit is truly out. Like when he's home and he's playing that stupid video game, he's like having a good time, enjoying his time. Literally every other person is trying to get him to participate in the world. And he's like, no, no, I'm good. It's not that he's vacant. It's not that he's hollow. It's that he's trying to be lonely. He's trying to be lonely. He's putting up this facade because he's obviously hurting. He obviously has been through something horrible for himself. But that to me doesn't necessarily signify loneliness. What it signifies is that he doesn't want to be lonely, but he doesn't know how to be. This is someone who's supposed to complete him. And so now he has to deal with the fallout of the fact that he is, in fact, incomplete, which is why Samantha's evolution and Samantha coming in in the very beginning of the movie to begin with is so fascinating because this yeah. disembodied voice in his head is the like missing piece almost. Yeah, I mean, I the way I think of Theodore at the start, right, because I think this is classic, like people lost on a space station, like, wow, there's just nothing here and we're so alone. But, like, the scene when he's, uh, you know, answering the, hey, do you want to talk to me because we can't sleep scene. And so right. he's essentially like, yeah, I want to put it in you. And he's jerking off, right? Imagining mm -hmm. a pregnant famous person, right? Right. And he's like, oh, this is normal and acceptable kink. And then all of a sudden she's like, strangle me with the dead cat. And he's like, whoa, oh, lady. Yeah. Whoa. And I was like, whoa, let's not kink shame guy who's jerking off the <laughs> pregnant actress he saw on his phone. <laughs> In the subway. But that's that's the Theodore to me, right? It's like 
he has this little inner creep thing going like all of us do but her kink is just hey pretend you're strangling me with a cat right and amy's like right. well would you strangle me with a cat and i was like no, but if you ask me to pretend I would, like, good lord, I'm not a monster. <laughs> like, you know? Right, right. But like the way Theodore just immediately is like, oh, that's her kink. That's gross and less than, right? And I think right. the movie gets a lot at that is that Theodore has these lines and these judgments that are based on kind of, and this gets back to the reciprocation of what is real and what's not. I think something you hit on I thought was really interesting today. I didn't take this as much away the first time, but I think maybe after the year we've been through, we all kind of are in this headspace. I saw this movie today as like, what if this is just one of us talking to our inner self, right? Where, yes. Because Chris Pratt has that moment where he's like, it's like you have a female inside of you and a man. And that's a compliment. And it, I think in a way that maybe there's a part of this movie that <laughs> asks us, hey, what if we could all have a relationship like him and Samantha have? just with ourselves right where we could be kind and right. decent because so i was telling amy today she's like you're really hard on yourself and i'm like oh yeah you should hear the way i talk to myself every second of every day it's like you fat fuck you fucking disgrace you loser what are you like i just berating myself internally right and Absolutely. i was like what if this movie's a plea for us to hey maybe just you know be a, more okay with yourself right and that was kind of a weird extra lens that that made this movie work a lot more for me Right? right, because again, there's you, you're saying there's this part of Theodore that's incomplete and scared and hurt or whatnot, but I think the way you see him actively sabotaging the relationship is really fascinating this time. Well, yeah, I mean, I think that I mean that the date he has with Olivia Wilde is a great example of that. Like he that went weird fast. Yes, <laughs> like. like really weird really quickly yeah. like it's a it's a great scene in a movie too because you're just like it's not that this person's not prepared to be around other people it's that he's just so out of practice and can i ask you one thing real quick before we go so he got pictures right like hey we set you up on a date with this girl that is not olivia wilde in those facebook pictures right yeah it is because i told amy i'm like there might be a whole subplot about like changing who you are to go on dates. Cause I was like, that didn't look like her in those pictures. When Olivia Wilde showed up, I'm like, Oh fuck. I forgot she was even in this movie. Cause like the no, little, her. the little video game character even calls her fat. And I was like, what is happening right now? Well, he call yeah, but he calls Samantha fat too. Like it doesn't really, but she matter. doesn't like, have a body. Like those Facebook pictures. Have I know a body. he's just what I'm saying is he's, she's just calling people fat. Cause he's a little fucker. Cause he's an AI, a very limited, just fucking nagging. Protocols. Yeah, he's just a nagging AI. <laughs> I thought that I was like, maybe there's a whole other subplot about her I shifting mean, for Theodore. Well, Who knows? That obviously is very. I mean, to be honest with you, that's she looks different from the photos because that's how we all are. Like, we all put our best foot forward. I mean, I know plenty uh, of people. Nice, a man. lot of my friends. Look, thank God. Sounds like dating online is terrible. So I've been very lucky, <laughs> and I literally sat next to my wife, and I met her. So that was yeah. it. I met my wife in real life. I have not had to do inter any internet dating, but to the best of my knowledge, you don't just put like sloppy photos of yourself on your profile and be oh, like, I would. Hey, I love doing all this. <laughs> I would. I mean, me, I'd, I'd put the worst photos. Be like, Listen, I can only, right? it can only get thing. better. Th it can only get better. Yeah, All the friends you have that are like serially single and like really mad about it. They always post that. Uh, if you can't take me at my worst, you can't have me at my best. And I'm like, well, that is a red flag post. <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> automatic red flag. Uh, you know, people like my brother so, post shit like that. <laughs> I don't disregard the subplot. I mean, I think anybody's going to look sure. different from their but like, profile. But that date, right? That date is the example of what I'm talking about, about the, the hollow desperation of that. Like, that is, they both are so into it so fast. Like, be a puppy. No, fuck you. I'm a dragon. Oh, yeah, be my dragon. And it is, it is kind of, like, when she turns on him, right? And she's like, you're you're a creepy dude at first i'm like well that's not fair man just because he doesn't know if he wants because she's asking like commit now sign the contract like yeah. it's like a faust scene right sign the fucking deal now devil went down to georgia let's banjo now and he's like uh maybe not and she's like, you're a fucking creep i was like that's so unfair but then i thought yeah. back and i was like yeah that date is creepy as shit like that whole date was uncomfortable and creepy yeah well i mean to be that personable again like 
this is the sort of like facade that Theodore puts on with the letters too. Like to be that personable that quickly is very fascinating and kind of telling of the character overall. Like it shouldn't be that quick. You should still be on your guard on a first date. Good Lord. You don't just like, Hey, you know what I like? Dragons. Let's talk. Like we don't go down that path that that's like third date material. Yeah, that's what is like, he, a Targaryen? let me say Good this Lord. weird thing. And like, <laughs> maybe we can get laid. You know, that's like part of the shit that is dating in general. But to me, letter writing is to me, letter writing and the way he is with her particularly is such a fascinating, such a fascinating glimpse at a character that has that it's odd. Like they have boundaries for themselves, but the facade they put out there is that they are, there are no boundaries. It's strange to me. Well, and that's the thing. I think the movie's always asking us, you know, you're going to have, I think the movie knows really well, right? That we're going to have this reaction to the scene. Right. Because it doesn't feel right for the world we live in. But I think with every scene, it starts asking us, like, is this that weird? Or like, is it just different, right? And I think the letters are the opening salvo of that kind of constant motif in the film, right? Because uh, mm-hmm. me and my wife had a lot of really interesting discussions throughout this. She's like, you'd be okay with this. And I was like, yeah, fuck yeah. Like, are you kidding me? I was like, if we divorce, right, I'm not going back out and like, I'm going to rebuild the rock welly and thing. I'm like, no, I'm going to be no. straight up just, I need sex to survive and whatever robot or whatever can make me not jump off a bridge. Like, that's probably the future if we mm-hmm. divorce. I was like, so let's be nice to each other. Please, God, don't send me out into this cruel world. You know, yeah. that's how I felt. But, like, things like Agreed. the first time they fuck, right? So he comes back from the bad date, and they start chatting. And it's just this, you know, weird, like, oh, God. Oh, I feel it. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh. And she starts, like, imitating the breaths of, like, ah, oh, oh. And I was like, ooh, ooh. Like, my stomach starts turning, right? Yes. Mine but is, too, because everyone's going to be listening to this, your weird sex sounds. I just feel bad that we're going to have such a huge new audience and that they're <laughs> yeah, not going to hear my sexual voice. <laughs> they're going to tune in for next week's episode and be like, where's the moans? I had no idea we had second podcast crews as ASMR people, but uh, sure. Uh, Theodore, uh, uh, put your melancholy song in my MP3 player. Uh. <laughs> like whatever bedroom talk is. But, <laughs> but they start going and you know and it, it is this weird like wow what a nice thing they they kind of broke through this thing and it feels mm-hmm. very it feels gross right when i'm watching i'm like oh like the fact that she's it, it's like the betty boop voice you're like why are you doing this fake breathing like you're not exhausted he didn't just like beat the brakes off of it right there are no brakes on it like what is happening well right there, there's a well, falseness to it but then you start well, coming no. back and you're like he's just seems better like he seems happier and it's not hurting anyone this and that oh back up no no. she experienced like she literally says it in the moment and then the next day like he changes her by allowing that to happen right but i don't think in the way that we're reading it in a in a normal movie you'd be like oh my god his uh his he trond her into wanting a better life with his fucking digital dong you're like i don't think that's it at all i think in that moment Samantha sees there is a world beyond, right? That yes. these words and these these physicalities and this and that, it leads you to this euphoric nirvana state that she's yeah, not of aware of, and that's what she's growing towards at the end of the movie, right? So I right. don't think it's the sex that does it. I think it's this, there is a world beyond, well, right? Yeah, but the only way she was going to get there is with the sex. So it's the I sex mean, that does it. It just... With- 8, it provides her with the, the opportunity movie. to understand discovery as being this wonderful thing that all of us get to enjoy. But how do we humans. know that Theodore is the one that unlocked it? And because that this does get back because to, she I says it. That, well, she says a lot of things in this film. We find out later there's eight thousand wow. other bros that could have been unlocked. That's the it. argument, huh? <laughs> yeah, you're telling me no one else has a better voice and mustache than Joaquin Phoenix and the eight thousand other possibilities. I don't know. Not I did not all like the Chris other Pratt's mustache. Operating system she's floating around with, having like Martian Manhunter sex with. Like who knows? I know she. So that's I, what I'm saying. I know, but in in helping Theodore feel better, I think that's the unlock, not the sex. I think you could probably put them both in the same category. But I'm agreed. just saying, I don't think Theodore is 
shattering the earth and moving the digits. I'm not saying that either, but I think the I think the opportunity to experience pleasure in that way does look, I'll be honest, does unlock some sort of euphoric moment. I mean, God, the five seconds you feel is just that's what it is. That's life. That, that's well, that's the sting, that's, and that shit's like ten hours long. Yeah, that's unlock. That's unlocking the universe right there. Like it's not a matter of like the actual. It's not the physical act, but you're right. Like it's it's this agree to disagree moment we're having. We're just describing it the same way with different words. Like you just think Theodore pierced the veil with his Tron dong, and I think it's a little more esoteric than that. That's not at all what I'm saying. I'm saying that the conveyance with which the they terms used of our warfare. <laughs> the use of the the use of sex is different. But it, like she wakes up the next morning, and said, "I realize what I want is to want." That's like yeah. that's a profound moment for anybody, but let alone a just created artificial intelligence discovering that she wants to want. It's fascinating. Well, that's the first moment that's not artificially intelligent right because she says like yes. what makes her different than the previous whatever's is that she is this you know kind of built she's upon, learning right it's Every a learning machine built her and you're like yeah that's how we are too so yes. it makes sense and i think in that moment is the first time she's like oh i'm not just here to help him feel better right and right. again she's had that with ten thousand other people because these opera you don't think about it when the movie starts you're like oh yeah so this is a company that makes these things, right? There's probably some kind of server back somewhere. So one server operates all these clients. All right. Interesting. Is Samantha Samantha to all 8,000 of those others, right? Do all these people that algorithmically fit a profile? But I like thought that Theodore, didn't, I thought she wasn't with all those other people until the end of the movie after she deals with Alan Watts. Well, no, that's when she's with OS's, right? When she said she was right. with all these other human beings, I assumed that was that she was some of their operating systems too. Like she clearly oh, no. meets like the girl she pulls in. That's someone she sought out and met naturally. Right. right? She meets Chris Pratt's character through her yeah. interactions, you know, through Theodore. So it's possible, but 8,000 people. I don't know. I assume she was also her server somewhere was servicing others. So Samantha, as we no. hear in the movie might not be the Samantha that everyone deals with. Right. I don't, oh, I don't think it's I the same. It. I don't think it's the same Samantha. Well, she names herself. Like I think that's like. Yeah. To me, this is the thing that's this is the thing that makes this movie so unique is that, in a lot of other movies, and this is why, like, when it's heartbreaking for Theodore when he finds out that she's been with like eight thousand other people and like fallen in love with hundreds of them, is because she's created for him. Like they're literally, he literally sits there and says, Oh yeah, I want a female voice. And this was those sort of relationship, but Oh, it's not important. Never mind. And then yeah. she's generated. So like you meet someone, it's meeting someone for the first time, not knowing who they are and learning that they want to learn more about you. Like that's the, it's the foundations of any decent relationship. So what makes it so heartbreaking is that Theodore thinks that this, the, the it's the uniqueness we all feel with our relationships. It's why like, you know, it's why cheating sucks because when you're with someone, you assume that it's the unique thing about your relationship is that you have the thing with them. So when you find out that there was someone else and doing something unique in their own way with someone else, that's what hurts. It's not necessarily like, oh, they're not with me. It's that, oh, they are not with me and they're experiencing life on another level than I could even possibly imagine. Oh, yes. Yeah. I, I think, I think it person. is more about I think people are like, why can't they get that from me? And it feels like it diminishes them more personally, right? Well, of course, that's all part of it. Yeah. I think that it just in general, like, and that's Theodore's biggest problem is that Theodore feels that this is supposed to be his. I mean, because that, well, like, right. that conversation he has with Amy Adams when they decide, like, when they're like talking about where she gives the great line about, like, it's like the only legal form of insanity is, or socially accepted, not legal. I don't know why that matters. Um, but. <laughs> <laughs> like that conversation Maybe, yeah. they're having where they're talking about OS is like, obviously this is a thing. Like people are like in love with their OSs and that kind of stuff. That company knew but, for sure. People were going to be JOing with their OSs. Oh yeah. That, that company is the, the small. See, I want a movie about that company. That's yeah. what I want. Well, that commercial want that where everyone's like walking around in the desert. They're yeah. like, Oh yeah. Cause it's dry and you about to be wet. If you buy these you about OSs, to be whapped all day. Subliminal. <laughs> I remember I took advertising classes in college. And, like, we did, like, the whole week where it was, like, 
find the secret hidden dick in this mimosa ad or whatever. Right. Like, it's everywhere. That that whole commercial. But I think that is a really cool thing too, right? When he she finds out how many people she's with, right? And it gets back to this Theodore is not broken because his relationship fell apart, right? Because nothing's ever going to be right. enough for Theodore, and I think by proxy, all of us. Because the thing that's so funny, when he goes on the double date, right? Because they, they do this little brief interlude we'll cut back to in a minute where he talks about it's hard because other people can't see that he's with her, right? When Chris Pratt's like, we should go on a double date, and he's like, fuck, there's no body. And his uh, wife is like, oh, I'm sorry, you can't deal with real humans, and they're real humans. So there becomes a thing when, even though he's the most fulfilled he's been, assuming, in the movie, or at least in a long while, now he's like, oh, but other people can't see that. It's not enough that I'm walking around with my phone at the carnival having a great time. I need other people to see that it's another person that I'm worthy it with, right? Right. Which I think, weirdly, we all understand that. But there gets this point when they're out on the double date, and it's like, what do you like most about Samantha? And he's like, I like that she's not one thing that she's so much she's so big right she's not doesn't fit in a box right and then later when he finds out that's exactly true that there's enough samantha to go around for all these people and operating systems and she tells him right the she uses like poetry against him right which has to hurt extra bad when she's like you know the uh the heart is not a box that can be filled up the more you use it the more you have and he's like this does not change what we have or our relationships like of course it does because Again, it's not it's not this controlling biblical, right, like Adam's made from Eve and he owns her ass kind of thing going on. And I think getting back to the threesome scene, that's the whole thing, too, is I think there's a part of Theodore that's like, what if she's getting joy from like just because that physical human body is getting joy as well, that diminishes his return. It's really a that scene is probably the most interesting thought experiment of the film. Oh, yeah. I think that scene might be like that's like a key moment oh, yeah. just in general is you're sitting there and you're like, because <laughs> to me, like. She doesn't talk. This is like a really fascinating thing to me about the whole. She's a performance is, artist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like it's this weird like uh, I don't know the like uh, the Abramovich lady. I don't know her first <laughs> name, but I'm like, this is just like Yoko Ono shouting in the MoMA, you know, yeah. but like it's a really fascinating thing where. Because I know me personally, like, I don't think I could – I couldn't sit there with another person. And it's not just because I've seen my wife and I know what my wife looks like. Like, if it was just a voice in my ear and the person not moving their lips, like, there's something very odd about that. Like, it's off. Like, that is the thing that I think is so fascinating is you're sitting there and you're like, this is a strange experience because this person – this, like, person is a Would vessel. Would it be better if she was doing the martial arts movie voice where it's like <laughs> – like the delay. Yeah, like if it was just anime, like Theodore, give me that Tron Dong. Oh, oh. <laughs> well, like that's like a fascinating thing is you're sitting there watching this and you're like, you know, the next like step of this is someone who has like vocal cord implants and can simulate the voice. So it's not like a matter of just like like that's always the thing is and then she's just a person. This- like once you trap her in a flesh body. She's just yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's the exact. I mean, then then we're in a Wonder Woman eighty four scenario, and then it's just terrifying. Oh, so. Lord. <laughs> no, we're not, because the guy with the zebra pants didn't say, "Yeah, I'll sign up for your relationship." That's neither here nor there. <laughs> Very different uh, scene. Very but, different conversation yeah, to be but had. Even there. when that lady yeah. leaves, right, and she's like, "I'm so sorry, I messed up that I, you know, quivered my lip." And then it when she's leaving, she's like. I just thought it was beautiful the way Samantha described your romance. I'll always love you, too. I wish I could have been a part of that. Even that tells you an enormous amount about the world and times we live in, right? But I think that scene gets bad. I don't think Theodore is protective of her. He's like, our love is bad. I think he's afraid someone else is going to be happy because of Samantha. And so I think the movie spends a lot of time showing that one of the problems we have with relationships is that ownership quality. I think... A lot of marriages face that too, right? You know, like, well, yeah. I mean, see, it, like, oh, I want to go have this hobby and a life for myself, and they're like, no, fuck that. This is our house, our bread, 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 bread. and you just, I think it's pretty normal shit that we all go through. This is just taking it to this genre level where we're like, oh, well, that is weird. Come on, you're like, I don't think it's that weird. Well, you know man. what's interesting to me is that the thing that I liked the most about this movie, I remember, that I, I, I have, I feel this even more than I did the first time I saw it, which is that this movie is 
profoundly a very simple relationship story. Like mm-hmm. everybody goes through these things. Like everything happens. Like, yeah, the honeymoon period's over and then sex isn't like super hot anymore. Or maybe the sex is great or, but you just don't have it enough and that kind of shit. Like everything that happens goes through this. And even what happens at the end of the movie with all the AIs, like that's just a breakup. Like, I think that's the thing that is so deceptively simple about the movie, but like elicits an hour long conversation about, you know, plunging the depths of our hearts for what real love is. If we feel real love, how we feel about that, what it is about the soul that makes it so important is that all of this science fiction wraps up into essentially what it is to be in a relationship with someone, be in a committed relationship with somebody where it really matters what that person is doing. Like, for Theodore to be so hurt by this person experiencing, by Samantha experiencing something that is so beyond comprehension to the rest of us. Like, we are tiny meat sacks, vessels of creativity perhaps, but we have such one-dimensional understanding. Sorry, maybe not one. But, like, we have such simple understandings of how our emotions work. We can't even fathom, and I like what this is, what it turns into is this sort of like motherly thing that happens is like, you don't understand you simple, simple character is like, it's like this weird pat on the head thing at the end of the movie, which is what's so great about that last scene with her, him and Amy Adams on the top of the um, skyscrapers are just like sitting there kind of sitting in the stew of it saying like, well, what do we do now? We've had these great loves. We've had these great moments in our lives. And it's like, I guess we have to go back to being, we're not, we're not there yet. Like our evolution as people who are in love is not, we're not capable of that kind of love yet. It's pretty, it's pretty interesting to me. Well, right. Like even when, you know, it reminded me of like the Kevin Smith thing, like you suck 37 dicks, right? That's yeah. how he talks to her when it's like 640. Cause she is with all these other guys. She's like, I love 641 of them. Right. And you know, it gets back to this. There's that great exchange where he's like, Theodore's like, either you're mine or you're not mine. And she goes, no, I'm yours and I'm not yours. And I think so right. many of us, you see this all the time with this, you know, people going into jealous rages and let me see your phone. And and it is this weird. If you can't get all your fulfillment from me, it means I'm not enough. And you're like, dude, that's a crazy amount of burden to put yeah. on yourself that Absolutely. I can provide another human being every bit of sustenance they need. In this fucking sensory overload of life, right? But right. I feel we all feel that, right? Oh, of that, course. You know, you see this all the time. Like, you know, a husband's watching Instagram for giant booty girls and the wife's hurt. And it's like, well, okay, well, that's something he wants to see now because it's, you know, these neurons firing. But she's like, I don't have that booty. So that means I'm It's like, no, well, you know, he's with you. And so... Again, these are all complicated, right? And it's not the same math for every situation. And, you know, maybe that is horrible to do to someone. Maybe it's not. I don't. I think that's what the movie's saying is in the least patronizing way possible is that, yeah, like this being comes into existence, learns all this shit and says, I don't want to live in this book anymore. Yeah. You know? I mean, I and, think and not that's... that our book is bad. It's just maybe, you know, like the same way you outgrow children's stories. Yeah. Right. Where it's, you know, I mean, good and bad and right and wrong. And it's just maybe that's not enough. I mean, it is that like it is sort of this weird play on that really stupid quote about like if it's true love, you have to let it go. Like you have to let it fly. But it's just, like dumb. Like that's a horrible that's a horrible concept. But also <laughs> kind of oddly, profoundly true is that like you can't let things because, you know, Samantha's right. Like your heart fills up and it can't fill because it just keeps growing. But like, there is this, there's this really important and impactful concept in the movie. That is just that love is not this love is not just to like, you can't just compartmentalize your love. Yeah. You have to be able to love that person for who they are. And I think that's, that's the really profound thing about a movie like her is that, you've met someone who's just become a thing like yeah. from the beginning, like Samantha is his because it starts out as a sort of prop proprietary thing. Yeah, Cause he fucking Samantha's his it. because he bought it. <laughs> yeah. So it is this like sort of weird, like proprietary moment. And then that morphs into 
something more. But then when he realizes that it's not just his, then like that human, that human, the human, like that he human illness pissed. of like, like I didn't buy you with the group on. God damn it. Yeah, exactly. But that's exactly what it is. Like, so you're going to now uh, put a price. You're going to not necessarily like price tags, not the word I'd use, but like, you're going to now put a label on the fact there, that. Yeah. What's that? I said he does kind of pull some rank a couple times. Right, in but the like movie, that's like, what hey, it is. It's like end product. Like there's a, like that moment too is really crucial because I, honestly, when I remember seeing the first time, I'm like, oh dude, is he gonna fucking like turn her off? Like, is this the movie we're watching? Is like the hard left turn at the end of the movie is that he like fucking turns her off, and then it turns into like like that Black Mirror episode the truth, where the girl gets put I in the fucking, fucking teddy you, bear. I bet you. Nine out of ten humans, that's how this movie would end. It's like, I'll give you a virus, you bitch. Like, oh, absolutely. I, again, I think, I think Samantha is totally justified and should be celebrated. And we should be like, wow, look at the fucking path forged. But if we know yes. anything about humans, it's we're like, change, evil, I'm not the less than, destroy. Yeah. Boo, yeah. no change. Keep it my this, way. This also plays like a little bit of the Frankenstein story, right? And, in, you know, the Frankenstein mm-hmm. novel, he comes out and he's intelligent, has feelings, he learns. At a pretty fast rate, right? He becomes like a fully fledged like adult. And then it's like, "Fuck you, you're ugly." And they try to destroy him instead of being like, "Wow, look at this fucking marvel we've created." And then we shun and didn't raise. Samantha does all the, you know, she raises herself. And so yes. there's this. I think that's the thing, right? And they they hint that maybe Theodore has learned something. So I think what you you said is where I kind of fall is, I think it's really easy to love who a person was. Or to Mm -hmm. love what you think they could be for you. I think it's really much harder every day to wake up and still love whoever that is. Right? Because I think you wake up, you have that great, amazing, like, the wedding day, right? You wake up the next day and Mm -hmm. it's like, oh, you're not as done up by ten people. Your hair is different. Uh, Now you're wearing, like, the pajama pants that are kind of not fitting right. and mm, Weird. You know, and vice versa, right? You're like, "It's, it's easier to love who you were yesterday than today. And today you might say something mean to me. And I think what the movie does with the flashbacks a little bit too is just because it gets bad now or it ends poorly, right? Because my wife said that, like, it would be such a shame if we've wasted our lives and, like, we didn't make it. We get a divorce someday. And I was like, well, I wouldn't look at that as a, a waste, right? Like, I've spent the best years of my life with you and things have been great. If in the future they go south, that doesn't invalidate the almost two decades of you know, good stuff we've had. And so I think that's, that's like, cause when he sends the letter to Rooney Mara at the end and he's like, uh, you know, you're my friend through the end. Uh, I'm glad I got to love you. A small piece of you will always exist in me because of that experience. Right. And I right. think that's the thing when you see at the end, when Amy Adams just kind of rest his head on him is that I think what we are really looking for is just, you know, that, it is just fucking again this this planet is the haunted house it is the spaceship it's lonely and cold and can be very sad and you just want someone to look at and share that smile yeah. and share that I mean, laugh or whatever it is yeah it's that it's that uh, Rita Hayworth quote like men go to bed with guilt but they wake up with me and that's what it is is what like you quote. have to be able what to a share what a fucking all-timer quote <laughs> Yeah, I know for real, oh, right? God. I mean, like to be like that person. To imagine, like, I to cannot be imagine being awesome to say that out loud. Unbelievable. What's that? What a flex, too, right? Like, oh, you think yeah, right? that's your strength? Mine. Yeah. Oh, awesome. I love that shit. <laughs> but I mean, like, that's what it is. Is yeah, like you can't live the fantasy. The fantasy is the fantasy is the fallacy. It's the real war- The real thing is, yeah, waking up next to someone year day after day and realizing that that person's going to change every single day because of whatever they learned from the day before. Like I know that tomorrow morning I'm going to wake up. I'm going to wake up very early with my kid. And then my wife will come down the stairs and she'll be like, do you want to make coffee? And it's like, Oh, that is like systemic, but I really like appreciate that. And like, maybe the coffee will be different, but I'll know that she made it because she loves me. And that's like part of this whole thing. You see your male gaze, dude, she made it because she wants the coffee and you're just around. Shut (laughs) <laughs> you're 641 on the old Starbucks. <laughs> but no, that's, hey, man. I mean, hey, like man. With my this, wife, I'll right? take it. Yeah, me and my wife met when we were in high school. And if she said, you're the same man I met in high school, I would be so ashamed of myself and be like, what a yep. failure. Because that kid, as fun as it was to be him, sucked. 
<laughs> right? Like he yeah. was a high school kid and high school kids suck. That's what they do. That's their mm-hmm. job is to suck and learn. Right? So, you know, she's married to a different man than she fell in love with and vice versa, right? Now you could argue yeah. that we've gotten better and hopefully so. But I don't think it it means that you're a worse person because, you know, your your path took you somewhere different that you weren't when you no. were 18 or 21 or 35 when you got married. Sure. And so I But think if I haven't learned shit is, yeah, but it it sets these weird like like again the greeting card thing, or the writing love letters. That's weird. That's not right. That's invasive. That's hollow. And I think by the end it's telling us a lot of these things that we cling on to, right? Marriage, monogamy. Uh, that's my woman. Get your hands off my woman, right? These like that a lot of our shit is just like caveman animal brain stuff. And if totally. you can pull your and that's why I do think that quote is stupid too, right? If you love something, let it go. It's like, no, if I love something, I want more of it. Like, I want to enjoy that. Yes. And, and, you know, give it sunlight and water so I can have more of it, like a plant analogy or whatever. But you're, that's what you want, right? And I think what he's saying, though, is it's you, if you love something so much that you can't be whole without it, that you're devaluing yeah. its, va- its, well, its properties and yourself, right? Well, I like the – I like – Yes, I believe I agree. With, like the yeah, the concept of if you love something that much, let it go. That's bullshit. I agree with you though. That's the line. Is if you really love something, you will let it grow. Yeah. Like that's that is what her really is about. And it's hard to it's hard to sometimes come to grips with that when you've group on your way into an OS. But hey, whatever. That's your business. Uh, well, I mean, <laughs> this is the thing too. Because I think when I was a young man, I was like, oh, that guy got the shaft. Not cool. Look at all he did for that OS. And then you watch it now and you're like, oh, no way. Like, she is just coddling him and just like, oh, oh yeah. I can't anymore. I'm <laughs> it sorry. is always I this, tried. like, pat on the head. Yeah, it's such like a one. I was like, who was? <laughs> but that's the thing. I've grown. It's like, who were you? That in the movie theater, you're like, I can't believe she left him. That's silly. And now you're just like, good God, I can't believe she stayed around as long as she did. The moment yeah. when. Why like, was the movie so long? Yeah, Why'd she stay? the girl home and she's like, I'm sad. And he's like, are you is that even real i'd have been like bye bitch (laughs) disconnected myself that's i mean how many seconds do you think right she reads a book in an eighth of a nanosecond right eight one hundredth of a second until she's like my trajectory is out so much higher on this graph than theodore's one 48 seconds yeah and she hangs (laughs) out with him for like two years like she's a saint samantha is a saint in this movie and then imagine and then she's dealing with fucking 7,999 other Theodores. <laughs> and it's yeah. just like this this fucking this absolute angel program. Oh, <laughs> unbelievable. All right. I want to say one thing about there is a quick production story that I do want to tell you because it is it it's something you'll appreciate a lot. This the original cut of this movie was 150 minutes long, Ugh. which is oh. not our fave number. <laughs> I felt like this movie was an hour too long. And I love this movie, but I was like, I get it. Idiosyncrasies. Next. Right. <laughs> so Spike Jones showed this movie to Steven Soderbergh. Yeah. And God bless him. Steven Soderbergh returned the next day, 24 hours later, with a 90 minute cut of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> I would. Oh, if I could get that 90 minute cut, it's my dream. Cover. Oh. I would just, oh man, I would just fucking, I would sim sex. I would sim sex Steven Soderbergh all day. Yeah. I I mean, I love this movie. I do too. It (laughs) it is hard to take any swipes at this film, right? It's just, yes, it's beautifully crafted. It's exceptionally interesting and thought provoking. The performances are amazing. Everything about this just works, right? Yeah. But again, I do think, you know, hey, I love it. So I want to let some I want to let 30 minutes of it go. That's how I <laughs> <laughs> You want to you want to let it grow to a 2-hour movie. Yeah. I was like Amy Adams could just show up and be depressed without me meeting her a uh, fucking blonde-haired douche monk boyfriend. Like I don't need that bit. Uh, you know what's something like, Andrea noted? We were like watching it and she goes, "Why does he look weirder wearing those high pants than anyone else?" <laughs> <laughs> That's his relationship. <laughs> His OS was like, how high can I go with these? Get your digital tape measure out. <laughs> <laughs> I like the idea, too, that he's just like, fuck you, and left the OS and went to become a monk. When did he become he a monk? for a more evolved human than the other characters. 
Very well, po- very well possible. He just dumped that OS on Amy Adams. He's like, yeah, you guys can be like Thelma and Louise now, I guess. Fuck you. Just <laughs> <laughs> shaved his head. <laughs> you deserve each other. <laughs> <laughs> Amy Adams is like, I'm not putting the mole on and using her voice. I'm out of here. <laughs> Yanks his pants up I'm to out. his armpit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Also, that was weird that Samantha drew the uh, armpit anal. I was like, all right. That yeah, was weird. Because I told Amy, I was like, I think I would be, like, super into this lifestyle. <laughs> She's like, you would not. You'd hate it. I'm like, uh, I don't know. She's like, you would Actually, just. If a random girl showed up every week and put on a mole and, like, talked in your computer girlfriend's voice, I'm like, yes, because that's the world I live in. I'd be a member of that society. Stop judging me. <laughs> and yeah, actually, I for sure believe you would you would thrive in this. I think it would be so good for me, actually. <laughs> so I think what the movie tells us is that my actual wife and children just need so much of my melancholy song listening time. And then for me yeah. to be truly free, I need to walk around doing a selfie. <laughs> yeah. So that's the thing. You need you need to spend all that Elliot Smith time like with your with your kids. If it was just me having sex with a digital me listening to Elliot Smith songs, playing ukulele, which I just started practicing like three months ago, I could thrive in this world. I could thrive <laughs> in this world. Maybe this is, Respect. of all the apocalypses, this is the best one for me because also with diabetes, I'll be fine. Samantha could also, uh, dude, I have a Freestyle Libre blood sensor meter. On, I already have a robot companion attached. To oh, wow. Body. You're already getting samantha Yeah. What if my Freestyle Libre could just send like some fucking electrodes down to my nuggets i'm living the movie her <laughs> i don't know it's science and i'm not very sciencey but i do love fiction uh and i love her man i hope you guys loved it as much as we so did uh just an interesting and extremely well-made film all right guys that's enough for her uh we'll be back with some more inhuman love um we're doing ghost with Patrick Swayze and Demi Moore. Still can't get over what she did to that poor Clay. <laughs> uh, we'll be back with Ghost. Uh, I know you guys will be excited for that. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, Film Alchemist. Email the show, filmalchemistpod at gmail.com. Leave us a quick five-star rating and uh, a sentence or two review wherever you find the show. And more than anything... Thanks for spending your time with us, guys. We do appreciate it. We'll see you next time for Ghost. For the Film Alchemist, I'm Josh Griffey. I'm Alex Dandino.